Hey everyone, Alex here. Thanks for tuning in. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to set up your transmitter with the Velostone FPV simulator. So if you want to follow along with the setup, go ahead, grab your transmitter. This is the Tyrannus X9D. And you'll also need a compatible USB cable that most likely came with your transmitter that will allow you to plug your USB into your laptop to go through the configuration step. So you may be wondering, why should I get a simulator? Is it worth it? And how is it going to make me become a better pilot? Well, that's the big question I had for over a year that I was flying my quadcopter outdoors. Um, I was flying a bunch, but I wasn't really getting that much better. And I guess one of the big things was I wasn't confident in performing tricks because I was worried I just completely destroyed my quad. And that's where a simulator comes in. With a simulator, you can practice um, no matter what the weather conditions are outside, if it's raining or snowing, well, in your simulator, you don't have to worry about any of that. Also, if you have uh, restricted access to a park or a field, if there isn't one close by, you don't have to worry about that in the simulator. Another real nice benefit of, about, about the simulator is that if you're flying in a simulator and you crash, all you have to do is reset. If you're flying your physical quadcopter and you crash, well, depending where you're flying, it may be a challenge to, first of all, find it if there are bushes or trees nearby. But once you find your quad, you may realize that some of the propellers are broken or some other part of the frame has been damaged that needs to be replaced. Or you're limited by the number of batteries that you may have. In a simulator, you don't have to worry about any of that and therefore you don't risk damaging your really expensive quadcopter. So with all that said, let's get started with the transmitter setup. The first thing we need to do is to create a model in our transmitter. This is going to be a process that's really similar to creating a model with a physical quadcopter, except we're not going to include some of the binding processes because we're not actually binding to anything. We're using a USB cable instead. So the first thing you need to do is with your transmitter turned on, go ahead and create a new model. So once you have your model created, make sure to select multi-rotor and for my specific Tyrannus, I have this option here. I'm just going to skip through all of these right now because we don't actually um, need to worry about these and enter long to confirm. Next thing you want to do is press page to go into the model. And here you can rename the model. I'm going to call it sim so that it's clear that this is meant for a simulator. The only other thing we need to do on this page is to specify our receiver settings. Because we're going to be connecting to our computer via a USB cable, we don't actually want the internal receiver module turned on. So if you scroll to the bottom of this page to internal RF, if you press this option, you can see that we have this D16 mode. And so this is used for an actual physical receiver that we're using. But since we're just using the USB cable, you can go ahead and select off for this and go back to the main page. The next thing we need to do is calibrate our sticks so that they can move to the maximum ranges in our simulator. To do that, go ahead and long press the menu button. And depending on your trans version, you may have a slightly different page number. In my case, I have to go to page six of seven. And once you find this calibration function, this is um, what we're gonna use to actually calibrate our sticks. Go ahead and press enter to go into it. Next thing you need to do is press enter to start. And it's just gonna prompt you with several things that you need to do. So first thing is to center your sticks and sliders. For the simulator, we're only gonna be using the sticks, so you only need to center those. So what that means is take your two uh, standard control sticks and center them. The one on the right, or whichever one you have set up, should just spring back to the middle. However, the other one uh, may not. So go ahead and line those up as best as you can. Uh, make sure to look at the screen on the bottom, but also make sure that they're physically uh, clearly in center. Once you have that done, go ahead and press enter. And now you need to move the sticks to their max degrees in all directions. So what I like to do is just take both of them and move in a nice rectangular fashion a few times to really get them into the corners to ensure that uh, they have the max ranges. Once you've done that, press enter to confirm that. And now that's complete. You also had the option of moving some of these sliders um, on the sides um, to their max positions. But with a quadcopter, we don't use those. So 
you don't have to do that for the simulator. If you're doing this for a fixed wing in a fixed wing simulator, then it would be useful to calibrate those as well. So now that this is done, you can just press exit a few times and we'll go back to the main page. And that's all for the transmitter setup. The next thing we need to do is connect our transmitter with the computer. What's very important in this step is make sure your transmitter is turned on first. If you plug in the USB cable, then turn on your transmitter, you won't be able to select the proper functions. So with the transmitter turned on, I'm gonna take your micro USB cable that either came with your transmitter or one you have lying around and plug it into the back. You'll then get this option to select a joystick, a USB joystick or USB storage. What we want to do is select a USB joystick. So just press enter. And what this is going to do is now allow us to use the transmitter with um, a joystick functionality, just like with any kind of a gaming joystick, and now communicate with our computers so that we can use it in the simulator. Now with the transmitter connected to your computer via the USB cable, go ahead and open up Velocidrone. If you don't have Velocidrone installed, then um, follow the link in the video description. It does cost about $20 to download, but it's a really good investment to become a better pilot. So in Velocidrone, go ahead and press the controller page. It'll bring us to this page where we can select our controller and update any of the sticks or any of the uh, assignments that we want to use. So uh, normally what should happen is your transmitter should be identified automatically. In my case, you can see in the top left corner, it says FR Sky Tyrannus Joystick. And as I move my sticks, you can see them on the middle of the screen, they're moving around. And there's also the quad on the top right that is moving accordingly to uh, my stick assignment. However, there may be the case that your drivers are not installed correctly for your transmitter to be detected. And I'll post a few notes in the video description on how I went about fixing that. So otherwise on this page, there's nothing, there's nothing else you need to change for basic flight. You can see that I have throttle working, then I have my yaw here, I've got pitch and then roll left and right. If you want to do some additional calibration or if you didn't do it on your transmitter, then you can press this assign sticks button um, to basically move them to the max degrees, just like with the transmitter. But if you followed all my steps previous to this page, then you're good to go. So the next thing is just press the back button. If you press this options page here, it'll bring us to a bunch of settings. The only settings I actually changed were in the quad settings here. I changed the camera field of view to 110. I didn't change anything else. So once all of your settings are configured and you're brought back to the main page, go ahead and press the single player button. And here you have the option of selecting a quad. I just have the basic one for now, so I'm just gonna stick with that and go ahead and press select quad. Once the scenery page loads, this is where we're able to select the scenery we wanna fly in and if we want any tracks as well. So one of the scenes that I really enjoy flying in because it's super open is this countryside. So go ahead and select that. There are also a bunch of these track names. I'm not gonna worry about those for now, so I'm just gonna keep this first one on. You can also mess with some of the wind strength and actual race laps, but I'm gonna leave that off for now. So once you select your scenery, go ahead and select scenery. So now that our scenery is loaded, there are two things we wanna do first before we actually start flying. So on the right hand side, press this advanced drone setup, and it's gonna bring us to a page with our PIDs and our rates. So these values are actually grabbed from Mr. Steele's video. He did a lot of tuning with these values to see how they fit and field um, to best match his quad. And these are the ones that he said basically worked out best for the, si the simulator. So I just grabbed these for now. Um, they're worth messing around with depending on the quad you're flying. So I'd recommend just putting these in for now and hitting save. And the other thing we wanna change is this quad settings here. Once again, I just grabbed these from Mr. Steele. He's a much more experienced flyer, so he knows what he's doing. Um, these basically help to mimic the physical properties of the quad. So looking at drag, looking at different propeller sizes, and one really important thing, or I guess a thing to make life easier, is this battery emulation. Make sure to turn that false so you don't have to worry about your battery dying. Um, this way you can just kind of fly endlessly. 
So once you have these configured to your liking, go ahead and press OK. So once you have your settings set up, um, the first thing you want to do is just kind of mess with the controls and make sure that those are all functioning properly. And if this is your first time in a simulator, you may want to just go super fast and just do all the crazy tricks. However, um, just from my experience, that's not the best way to start learning. What I actually ended up doing was following this road, just following it all the way to the end, staying as low as possible and initially moving basically really slow so that I felt in control of when I was flying. Instead of going all crazy and rogue and trying to break speed records, stay slow and follow some stuff. There's also this fence on the side here and basically from just flying around and following these things, I've felt more control. I've felt like I've been improving rather than trying to break speed records and just kind of flying through all the trees randomly. So I def definitely recommend doing this. Um, you'll get better acclimated whoops, um, to all the controls. And I think you'll just learn better and um, have a better start than if you were doing something else. That's how you set up your transmitter with the Velocistone FPV simulator. In the simulator, you'll not only be able to practice more often, but you'll build your confidence so that you can fly faster and perform awesome tricks. I've learned a lot over the last few weeks flying simulator. I definitely suggest you get one for yourself. If you enjoyed this video and are looking forward to new content, make sure to subscribe down below. Also, I've got some awesome videos over here, so make sure to check those out. If you have any questions or suggestions, feel free to drop those in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching and stay tuned for the next video.